RAID 5 or RAID 6, which one should you use? Welcome back to the RAID Room, and today we're going to discuss, for your setup, maybe you're going for a big boy like the DXP8800 here, that's got a lot of bays, whether you should be opting for one or two disc failure protection. Now, in the early days of this channel, if you'll indulge me a little trip down memory lane, when we first started out here on the channel and on nowscompares.com, we would talk a lot more about the fundamentals. We were trying to take very complicated subjects in the world of storage and make them chewable and user friendly. And a lot of the time we ended up talking about RAID because RAID was, although understood in the tech sector, people didn't really understand the nitty gritty of how it worked and why it worked crucially and which ones were better suited to other users. Fast forward, we don't really talk about it anymore. And we throw words around like RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 0, ZFS, RAID Z, etc. I know one of those is a file system, get off my back. Um, we don't talk about it as much anymore in an explaining term because people are a lot more aware. However, regularly I do get asked all the time whether per uh, user, less a business, I would say, normally an enterprising uh, home user, is thinking about RAID 5 or RAID 6. So straight away, RAID 5, the one disk value protection, and RAID 6, the two disk value protection, I'll tell you right now, the performance between them is largely identical, although one of them's got an extra disk because of the way the parity is created, with two parity uh, bits being created on every single disk in a RAID 6, and only one being created on a RAID 1. It kind of offset any benefits that the extra drives will give you during the read-write process. And ultimately, I have seen, when it's come to utilizing hard disks in a RAID 5 or RAID 6, that although in some occasions one gives you um, a performance advantage over the other, it's by no means significant. Now, when you move on to SSDs, those margins do improve, but when it comes to hard drives, at least, there isn't any performance benefit overall. Although I will say, creating a RAID 6, as far as creating a RAID uh, configuration on with uh, resynchronization at the beginning, or just synchronization, it takes longer than on a RAID 6 than a RAID 5, but that shouldn't be your modus operandi for choosing which RAID configuration for your storage. But what about in the event of a failure? What if you've got a RAID 5 and a RAID 6, and both of them suffer one drive loss there, and you introduce a brand new drive for a RAID recovery? Which one is quicker? Well, it probably won't surprise you that the RAID 5 is the quicker of the two. And it comes down once again to the fact there is only one parity being created there. So when it's creating the new disk and it's rebuilding from the existing parity on the remaining healthy disks, it only has to recreate the whole disk, including the parity bit, um, once. Whereas when it comes to the RAID 6, it has to do it twice because the parity is in, in, in twins across the drives. And ultimately it means that RAID 6 generally takes longer to rebuild. Now, what about when it comes to the capacity? Well, nice and simple, RAID 5 to get more storage than RAID 6. There you go, you lose two disks of storage, you lose one disk, let's move on. Now, what about risk? Because let's be honest, this is something we talked about quite a lot a while ago when it comes to 30 TB disks. And a number of you, when I was doing my build of four 30TB discs was commenting on the fact of how long it took, and you're absolutely right. I was using a pretty high-end powered Ryzen system, and it still took, I think, around two days to build a RAID 5 configuration with four 30TB discs. Now, we said earlier on, that shouldn't be the reason that you choose one RAID over another. However, one of the things we also have to acknowledge is during that time, when I had all four disks in place, I took one and I wiped one using a docking station and reintroduced it and did a RAID recovery. And that took ages. I think it was around 50 odd hours. Now during that 50 hour period, if during the rebuild, another drive had actually died, I would have lost all of my data. Without going down extremely expensive, comprehensive data recovery company route, I'd have lost everything. So having a RAID 5 with larger disks, we have to at least acknowledge that in the event that another drive dies, it is game over. And in a RAID 6 environment, yes, it would have taken longer to rebuild. Yes, it would have taken longer in the initialization to build. But if another disk dies during the RAID recovery in a RAID 6, the, the game isn't over. The, the battle isn't lost. And we have to acknowledge when it comes to hard drives, something I've talked about in other videos before in dribs and drabs, when we buy our hard disks, if you were to go and buy, say, eight 30 TB Seagate Exos hard drives like this one, you might be thinking, yum, yum, in my time, I bought them. They've all arrived at the same time. They've all arrived with five years warranty. They've all arrived with me. They're all healthy, great. What if there was an inconsistency or an issue at the factory level? 
might have affected the whole batch. Because I'll tell you right now, practically no e-retailer you purchase from will have, if particularly the larger the drives you go, where they're more expensive and therefore the profit margin and you know having a lot of their capital in one place, if you buy eight 30TB drives, they do not take eight 30TB drives singularly off eight different shelves. They don't take one each. They take eight out of the same case. So whatever it is that you are protecting yourself from in the case of a hard drive that might be a small inconsistency that over time graduates into a problem on the drive may happen to those other drives during that lengthy RAID recovery. That doesn't just apply to large drives, it can apply to small drives. But still nonetheless, given the enormous margin of something to go wrong during RAID recovery, that is something that I don't think gets said anywhere near enough when it's comparing RAID 5 against RAID 6, not having that additional safety net. Neither one of these, by the way, is anywhere near as good as a backup. RAID is not a backup. There's a reason I stuck it on that sodding hoodie. But if you're going to treat a backup as a backup, but you're going to treat RAID as a safety net, understand that depending on the size of the data, that safety net might have some slightly tenuous holes in it that you don't really want to fall into. But nevertheless, what if the hardware problem you have encountered is not the drives, but the system itself? What if you had a system where it is a fault with the CPU, where it, you know, it overclocks or the power delivery on it, and when it overworks, it trips and reboots? That can damage your RAID array. Now, you could argue it's not going to make a difference whether you like it or not, whether you're using a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 in that case. However, do keep in mind that in the event of that happening, that's going to happen when the system is being more taxed, at least in this minor hypothetical scenario that I'm coming up with. And your system is going to be more taxed by increments in a RAID 6 over a RAID 5. I know I'm giving you deer in the headlights here, and neither one of these is definitively proving one stronger than the other. But it's important to keep in mind all of the different facets of problem that you may well encounter between RAID 6 and RAID 5. I would say the minute you are looking at larger drives, it may pain you when you think of the cost of larger drives the bigger the drives, or indeed when you've got more than six drives in your system, I think you kind of have to go RAID 6 anyway. Because unfortunately, the minute you go above that number, you've now got more points of failure being introduced into your storage. It's by no means a hard rule, but I think depending on how important the data is to you, and obviously have a backup in place, but... If you're going to look at the RAID configuration, you've got more than six drives, I think that's when you meaningfully have to examine RAID 6. And if you've got more than 12 drives, or even including 12, I think you should have RAID 6 regardless. Anyone running a 12-disc system like a rack mount, or even some of the rare 12-bay desktops, if you're running that in a RAID 5, you don't like your data. I'm telling you that right now. Also, before someone says it in the comments, when I say RAID 5 and RAID 6, I'd say pretty much everything I've said for the most part also applies to RAID Z and RAID Z1, okay? So just keep that in mind. This isn't completely about um, the likes of traditional RAID configurations versus that of OpenZFS top-based ones. Uh, on top of that as well, we haven't really touched on hot spares. Uh, me personally, you may have noticed it in some videos, I normally run a RAID 5 with one hot spare. That's what I use because a lot of the time I'm away from the office and a RAID recovery can be required during the night. So an automated hot spare where I can have one drive sitting in an empty bay, which will then step in in the event of a RAID failure so it doesn't have overnight running in a slightly more resource hit environment in degradation before I introduce a new drive. For me, that's what I use in six to eight base systems that I deploy. A RAID 5, but with a hot spare. You still lose out on the capacity, uh, the capacity um, on the, you know, comparable to that of a RAID 6. But nonetheless, I think it's a middle ground between the safety in it there being ever strengthened and still having overall the advantages that a RAID 5 gives you over a RAID 6. You do miss out on that drive, but I think in every other regard, you're winning. But if you go above eight bays, I do still think that's when you have to meaningly think about RAID 6. But have you got a user experience that I've overlooked? Maybe there's a detail I've missed out. I'm still trying to put as few cuts in these particular RAID room videos as possible to keep them compelling when it's just me chatting at you. So anything else I've thought of after this, I'll pin it in the comments below. But apart from that, let me know anything else you want to see discussed here on the RAID room via those comments. And apart from that, I will see you next time.